Hey everybody and welcome back to the Garage Gym Experiment Podcast. My name is Adam Jakes in here too with some more friends. We have Matt Pendergraf, Rob from Vintage Weights, and Knife Like Mike. Guys, how we doing? Doing great, Adam. Doing good, good buddy. PGH, I'm here. PGH is in the house. Jake, I know you're doing good. Guys, we're back for a special episode on tonight's episode. We're going to be doing a Home Gym Con recap. <laughs> That's why the gang's all here. So, Jake. <laughs> Take it away. Okay, thank you, Adam. I'm not sure why you think I'm doing so good. He's but... really doing good, Jake. <laughs> He's so bad. I just stopped um, All right, so yeah, we're like Adam said, we're here to do a home gym con rundown. So, you know, just I'll, I'm going to do a quick little timeline as to like if, if you weren't really paying attention for the past year or so, this is this is how we got to where we got. So um, last year, middle of April. The first year home gym con happened. Um, every there there are um, some rundowns of of how it went, um, but in general, everybody seemed to everybody that went last year, whether you're a vendor or you know you bought a ticket or a content creator, they had a pretty good time. So um, actually, a great time. Most people had a great time and um, really helped spread the word the that first few weeks, and. Um, Right away, um, we we decided that we we're doing it again in French Lick. Um, about a year later, uh, started signing up vendors right away, and then also giving people the opportunity to to buy tickets. Uh, so last year, I th I think there was like twenty eight vendors um, for that first year, and um, about forty five hundred five thousand square foot was was filled. And then that first week after, I believe we, I believe like 20 signed up right away. So we, we were able to get the momentum rolling. We had 20 companies already. I was able, we were able to um, kind of go out and contact other companies and say, Hey, we already have 20. And it was, it was, it was actually pretty easy to sign people up or like there wasn't too much of a, a learning curve. And most people were pretty anxious to to get involved. So, um, you know, I think, I think we also started off with like 1200, 12,000 square feet that we wanted to fill up, which was like over two times, um, more space. And, uh, I think, I think that was sold out in like two months, like something like crazy, crazy fast. And we we're like, we have to make some adjustments. So ended up, I think, making it to like 15,000 square feet. And then like a month later, that was sold out. And then um, 18,000 square feet, which is like where we pretty much settled on for that main floor, that sold out within like three or four total months. So we decided to add another room that was like separate from the primary exhibition hall and started filling that up. But it it eventually became a pretty tough sell um so so it was, we were kind of stuck at like 15 companies for a while up in that second room which um you know they weren't it, it it wouldn't have been a great experience but slowly but surely some companies dropped and um you know started weaving companies from that second room into the first floor um, it got down to like two months before and we had like maybe a month before we had like less than 10 companies there. So, hmm. um, really tried to like squeeze people in a lot of the companies that were in that second room ended up taking less square feet, um, to move in that second floor or to that first floor. Um, so that's, that's how we all got into one room. Um, and, and then we ended up having, I think at the peak, we had like 84 vendors and then it whittled down to about 70 as, as like companies dropped out within the last month or two before and even like days before, um, but 70. So still ended up being home gym con ended up being, you know, three, almost three times larger, um, in terms of vendors um then year number one um we also added some competition so we added right away we added a powerlifting meet a strongman meet 
an arm lifting competition and an Olympic weightlifting competition. So if you followed along, you saw that the powerlifting meet got canceled. Also, um, like two months before the event, the arm lifting meet got canceled, but we were quickly able to adjust and move that into a GSI grip competition, which Rob led um, and did an amazing job. Well, we don't have to go into too many details now, but um, quick turnaround there, just kind of talking about the, the journey um, as to how we got to where we got. But the powerlifting meet, you know, um, we had a, a company that was supposed to, or Bells of Steel was, was supposed to kind of power that. And they um, they had some employee issues and just some changes and had to back out of that commitment, like maybe in like December. So we had plenty of time to kind of make adjustments um, and decided to, we did, we did partner with Garage Gym Competition to kind of fill a powerlifting void, but that, that never really like yeah. took off. It was, it was really hard to give resources to like a virtual competition when we had these three competitions in house that were that we were also trying to grow um with all of those competitions i will say that they all kind of came together the last few months so the uh, strongman competition uh which kurt uh the kurt locker ran ended up with right around 50 people the grip strength competition um rob i think right around 40 people we had a little yeah about 40 signups and then 31 actually competed. 31 yeah so, so yeah 31 so, competitors so, so still massive massive grip competition the olympic weightlifting had just under 30 people i do think i i, I imagine that the the powerlifting numbers were very low as well uh i didn't i never saw how many signups I'm, there might have been only a couple um, so that might have played into a reason why that got canceled. But um, um, all all the of the competitions, were... Olympic weightlifting, I I was upstairs podcasting while that was going on. It looked amazing. But so I, I'm what I'm about to say is is in no way meant to be disrespectful, but it just shows the enthusiasm of the grip strength competition that there were more grip strength competitors than Olympic weightlifting competitors. <laughs> it's just kind of funny to say that, <laughs> but their competition looked amazing. It was a really well-run competition up there. I was watching it for quite a while. Yeah, it really was. All of the competitions, you know, maybe they may, they took a little bit longer than some people wanted, but they all ended up turning out well. My, my point was that like it all, they all kind of came together at the end. I think the powerlifting meet would have ended up having as good of a showing as any of them. Yeah. So, um, that was, I think that was just one thing that we learned, um, kind of like as the same thing as putting home gym con together that very first year, a lot of it comes together that last month. Um, so I, so, you know, I'm going through the timeline we had. 70 plus vendors, um, three main competitions with below, over a hundred athletes. Um, and then I, I meant, I, I also wanted to mention that most of the people that bought tickets year one were very helpful as well, buying tickets again for year two right away, which also helped the momentum. So we had, we had more people spreading the word. Um, as far as vendors, people who attended, and then, um, it just kind of led throughout the entire year. So we had, um, over two and a half times more ticket sales this year than year one as well. So, um, so yeah, I think that's, that's, uh, that's kind of what I wanted to share as, as far as the story, um, did you guys have any like any impressions as like we were um building it out last year? You may not have been given a ton of like information like that as far as how it was being planned and what were the numbers, but any any kind of thoughts on on that? I was going to ask you what 
what carried over from year one to year two? You had powerlifting and strongman year one, and then that happened year two, or no? You had some sort of competition or something year one, right? Or maybe it was just a, no. a fun lift it's session. Just a deadlift party, right? And yeah. All it was? Okay, okay. So yeah. all the competitions, that was a new thing this year. Okay. Right. Very cool. Well, yeah. Those are my thoughts. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know that I had. I mean, we got a media kit this year from you, Jake. Thanks for that. We got some logos and stuff to use in our content. That was that was like a, like a level up for the event. I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't know what I was, I wasn't thinking too much about it. I knew that it was getting bigger. I think that you did a really good job of updating as vendors were signing up. Um, I also think that you, Rob and Kurt did a really good job hyping up the strongman and the grip strain competitions and really highlighting the, uh, the giveaways, the prizes that were to be won, which is, I think right. why you guys quickly scaled from a handful of uh, competitors to close to 50 each. So well done there. I don't think I have any other thoughts. Like I was going and thinking like, I know this is going to be bigger. I know this is going to be better because there's a lot of learnings obviously in year one. Um, but I think that those, even going in with those, the, that knowledge and those expectations, I was still blown away by just the radical change in scale uh, from year one to year two, personally. But we'll get into that a little bit more. But those are just my, my first impressions. The thing that stood out most to me, um, even before we got there, so throughout the year, was just the increase in ticket holders. Because I had such an increase in people contacting me and saying, hey, I got tickets, I'm coming. And that didn't happen the first year. I, I knew of like right. two people the first year that were coming as ticket holders. Like I feel like 90% of people I spoke to the first year were company owners. So yeah. that was a huge yeah, change this true. year that beforehand there were just so many more ticket holders and, yeah, and that Rob, was a fun thing, you know? Yeah, Rob, I mean, I think, you know, I don't quote me on this, but I think going into that like last month before the event, we had like 45 ticket purchases. Wow. <laughs> like, oh, for year one. Um, for, yeah, for year one. Maybe it might have been more than that, but okay. like maybe two months out. But it was like in the forties for a while. Jake, do you remember, I remember the I, uh, I would try to like go ahead, Adam. You go. You go. <laughs> I was gonna Jake, do you remember the phone calls we had like two weeks out, one week out and stuff like that? Yeah. And like, all right man, here we go. You're like it was yeah, it was crazy. That was pretty terrifying. Yeah, I was um, going to say, I used to try to probe Kyle for information because I know that you you and him, Jake, would like hang out or like work out occasionally. I'm like, so how many people are signed up for this? Do we have any idea? And, <laughs> <laughs> and Kyle, would, I, I, you were being pretty mum on the topic, on the topic and he would just give me some like guesstimates based off of like tidbits of information that he would get from you. Um, but I mean, all of that said, you know, I've talked about it at length in multiple podcasts and, and things of that nature. I think year one was still very, very special. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it didn't matter who showed up. Super yeah, special. It, and... it was. It, and it ended up being like a few hundred people. Yeah. I think uh, year one had to happen for like year two to happen. And Jake, I don't know if you're going to get after it like now or you're going to do it at the end. But what that led into going into year three and where we're at standing here today. What I was going to say about the ticket holders was that um, it was equally enjoyable this year to see the reaction of new ticket holders, you know, as they walk through and, and kind of say hi to them or they say hi to me and and hear their reaction to things. But equally enjoyable to see some ticket holders from last year, like Bucks Jim and Joey and some guys that were there last year and see their reactions because they were there last year and they could see the same as me the growth this year so it was cool to see and meet those guys again and just kind of like reconnect with people again like seeing some of you guys again so i like that yeah that that was that was cool um and then uh, before we go into some more um specific questions i just kind of wanted to talk about the setup so i think year one the setup was just like everyone just kind of rolled in did their thing put their stuff in you could drive all the way up to your booth and hand unload it with the with the, from your truck and no one knew what to expect this year um or nobody was really prepared for it and i don't think any of you guys were here wednesday um mm -hmm. but rogue brought in like three 
semi trucks basically uh bolt brought in something rep had um pallet like massive amount of stuff delivered um atx had like 11 pallets something crazy of just Mm. massive amounts of body solid so there was a little bit of a log jam on wednesday Um, were they not able to drive trucks in this year is that what you're saying they were but okay but rogue really had so much stuff that it was like you know there was still only that one door and rogue couldn't get their big semis through the doors so so I think everyone was a little bit freaking out, like, oh, we're never going to get there. We're never going to, like, get this done. And Sunday is going to be a, a, a terrible getting out. But um, so that was that was kind of a learning curve. Wednesday was a little bit of a long day. Um, everybody with everybody setting up. It was, and it was really, like, 10 companies. But it was, the like, they had half the stuff. So, um Wednesday set up and then Thursday, I think, is when most of you guys got there. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, that was where another fifty companies came in. So I'd be curious to hear, you know, when did you guys get in and what did it look like? Uh I'll go first. I got in at 10 30 at night and I guess everything was set up because I didn't see anyone setting up the whole time I was there. But uh it was impressive to say the least. I popped over there. I think me and you had talked, uh, Jake, prior. Bear Steel, he was probably one of the last ones to set up, and I went over there to help him out. So uh, just seeing all the booths and everything, it was just, dang, this is legit. This is uh, this is going to be exciting. So, But, yeah, I could imagine Rogue hogging everything, uh, blocking traffic for sure. Them and Bolt for sure. I could see both of those. Oof. Bolt brought in a ton of stuff. I, oof. Um, Kyle and I showed up um around two or three o'clock on thursday and it was we we went we came right to the back right we drove around to the to where we knew we could park and and walk in through those side doors and i think in my mind i was i was preparing preparing for what i experienced last year where i like i wandered in on thursday night of last year and it was just, you know, a handful of friends just kind of like, you know, hanging around. You guys were chit-chatting. You guys had just got back from dinner. Um, you know, we're like, hey, we're going to lift in the morning. Cool, you know. But this year, it was like walking on. like It was like kind of like running across a freeway is what it kind of felt like. Like we walked into those doors and it was just people zooming past us everywhere, carrying boxes, putting together equipment. Just, just a madhouse of action and set up and people everywhere and i mean a ton of people that we don't know so it was very different from year one where it was kind of walking in and, and meeting a bunch of my my online buddies in person and just you know shooting the shit for a minute whereas this was oh this is a show this is this feels different this feels way different that's so that's what it was like when we rolled in on thursday we were supposed to record a podcast on thursday and we got so spun up into the whirlwind of everything that was going on and getting caught into a million conversations that were like, we're not going to be able to do this podcast. What time is it? I don't even know. <laughs> Let's go to dinner. <laughs> yeah. I got in late Wednesday night. My son and I got in super late. So then Thursday morning, like eight or nine, something like that came down to the events hall. And yeah, I'm not going to just rehash everything Mike said, but it, it was just massive so many people moving here and there but the thing that uh, was interesting was that dean from black widow was like the mayor again he he was like <laughs> one of the first set up and it seemed like everywhere i went <laughs> dean was there like already like hanging and talking with someone so i just he impressed me last year and this year with that that he was just like johnny on the spot when it came to getting set up yeah the family and i rolled in close to midnight on wednesday and jake you texted saying that you were still down there working so we went down and you and kurt were down there trying to set up strongman you you were a zong fan you were zombie it out and uh yeah i went to dinner wednesday night and yeah same thing pallets laying around still to be unpacked and just it was wow because you remember the year before year one in all that space as soon as you came down the escalator before that first booth hit man this year as soon as you came down you take a right and there's rep and then like 10 feet in front of you there's voodoo and they're all right there just in your face right away yeah, it was awesome. One thing that we added um, were the the awards. So I think I also want to mm. like mention who won the awards. So 
Um, we had best overall booth that went to rep. Um, best new product, the Adonis won that from rep. So they got two awards. Um, biggest home gym con contributor, uh, Black Widow, you know, doing for from everything from competition to sports to like spreading the word on Discord um, and such throughout the year, just speaking highly of it on social media all year, which is something that I noticed from like day one, day like from day one all the way until the the day the event happened. Uh, I think the 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 biggest reason like that kind of put them over the edge after like talking with with Rob and Kurt was just like how like forward he was with trying to help the competition. So like anything they needed, he was coming to them before they would even ask. So that was kind of what I, that was, that was, that was an award I picked, which was really, really hard and actually really hard to deliver. Um, because there were also some that I also thought could have won it easily, but, um, so black widow won that award. And I will mention, I almost changed the winner as I was delivering the speech. Uh -huh. Really? Wow. <laughs> as you're standing I was up so there. Close. And the award goes to. <laughs> I was so close. Nothing, yeah, not yeah, nothing is yeah. Dean is well deserved, obviously. But yes, I almost <laughs> changed it. Um, it didn't. Uh, so Dean won that. And then Dean also won top competition supporter for kind of the reasons I explained. Um, executive fit. Who made, made the, the actual awards, which were amazing, and um, displayed them on the um, his in his booth? Won most improved, and I think that was well deserved. And that was voted on by a small group of people that were there from the year before. And then one more award, it was Rookie of the Year. Rookie of the Year, ATX. Yes. Um, so those awards were cool. Uh, hopefully adding a few more next year. So we'll have to decide, you know, I think we'll have to do another podcast, like planning for next year. Like what other awards do we want to do? Uh, but that was cool. I think ATX kind of blew everyone's like mm -hmm. opinion out of the water. Like they, they crushed it. And I think everyone yeah. was kind of expecting like, um, like a Titan or rogue knockoff. Yeah. And everything they had was totally different. Mm -hmm. than anything that Titan and Rogue had. But like uh back to like the next question I was gonna ask. Uh, so I wanted to kind of um explain those awards and then also just like maybe like if you have if your answer is one of those aw uh, award winners, mention it, but also maybe feel free to just mention somebody else that you think might deserve some recognition. But like <clears throat> um number one who who was your favorite booth? And Mike Mike did all these interviews, which were fantastic. But I Thanks, think man. like, and I'm also I'm rambling, but I'm I'm also thinking about my answers then, and I kind of wanted to change it because <laughs> they were so on the spot and it's so hard <laughs> to think of. So yeah, but, but, yeah I wouldn't have booth. wanted to be interviewed by me. That's for sure. I'm gonna take a step aside for this one because. These are diff these are difficult to answer. <laughs> I think this is I, I'm still not going to answer, but this is where yeah. I was like, you know, they talk about like uh, reviewers or affiliates being biased, right? In the home gym space, like in terms of like answering these questions, like best booth, like I'm biased. Like I have friends, like I have <laughs> people that I love and who I want to give recognition to, and I'm super biased. I'm so I'm just going to preface that I'm not ready to give my answers, but that's how I'm feeling uh, as I go into this. I'm biased and ready. Okay, so... let's go, Rob. Let's go. <laughs> well, I, it's funny. Again, uh, this is why I like you, Mike, because I, I think I see eye to eye with you. That I, I've, I struggled with this question, too. I was thinking about this throughout the day today, and I was like, well, I'm biased. Like, I, I, like, I really like this company. I like this guy, whatever. And yeah. But then I was like, well, so what? Like, I, part of the reason I like their booth is because I'm biased. So okay. I got one right here. Mayhem. That could be helpful. Mayhem. I was just oh, wandering over to them stuff. because of their deep dish. I mean, I'm the vintage weights PGH guy. I like deep dish plates. Of course, I'm going to go seek out Mayhem. And a lot of people would ask me, like, hey, you're going to check out Mayhem's deep dish. But what impressed me about them, I thought more about it with their booth, was that they combined three elements that I think if you have the ability to have a big enough booth, 
really made a lot of booths special, which would be having the room to display a diverse product line, having the room for ticket holders to try the products because sometimes the booths weren't big enough to really get your hands on and really try them. And then the sure. third element is kind of the, the, the bonus round, if you will, element that if you do have a big enough booth to have a dedicated space for some type of feat of strength or some type of trial. And they had that too. They had their Chrome deep dish on a bar that you could try to deadlift. They had, you know, a section over on the one side with their different barbells. They had another section with uh, all their different plates and bumpers and things that they offer. So um, there were plenty of other companies that had that, but, you know, much bigger spaces too, Rep, Rogue, you name it, ATX. But Mayhem just kind of impressed me because I didn't realize they had that kind of lineup until I got to Home Gym Con. And then just talking with James and, and Max and their staff was fun. So Good that's answer. my pick. <laughs> Man, you, you, just, you just picked one. Good job. Good job. I, I like broken out into categories. I, I'm like, <laughs> I, think, I think Mayhem is like the a perfect example of like someone that you know, they they obviously have an Instagram and they're online, but they they made a great first impression to the mm -hmm. home gym community. And I think it's going to do them quite a bit of good over the next few years, just because not maybe, maybe people didn't like just buy their stuff right away. But now people are watching and yeah, um, yeah like good people at the booth and their plates were beautiful. Yeah, it's I mean, I, I went into it knowing that I'd make some videos and some content for my channel with their plates. So that's where the bias kind of comes in. I have an affiliation <laughs> with them, but uh, yeah, they it was more than just the plates. So I guess I'll just leave it at that. So um, me kind of speaking towards the affiliate stuff, I spent a little bit of time in reps booths, not a ton. Rogue, I didn't even step foot in their booth. Actually, I think I crossed through there was there would be one time and I regret not like looking, but, uh, I mean, you know, rogue stuff is nice. You know, it's going to be nice. You see it online. I've got a lot of rogue stuff in it, but I wanted to see new stuff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, plus I knew like none of the guys from rogue, like the actual like company owners or any people that I've ever like talked to the higher ups, they weren't going to be there. It was just going to be like the worker bees or whatever, which is cool. But, um, I don't know, like I'm, I'm kind of in this place. I want to get to know these people more than just a company i guess you could say like establish an actual relationships and stuff so anyways i'm rambling for me atx obviously because their stuff is so weird in such a great magical way you know what i mean it's like you see like yep. little little nuances and little details that these other companies here in the states are 100 percent going to rip off when they come over here and it's like it's just so great to see that and then talking to the guys, one of the guys, I mean, they're German. So it's like, you don't think they know who you are at all. And one of the guys is like, you're Matt Pendergraft. And I was like, that is amazing. That you know who I am. I'm no one. I'm literally no one. But the fact that you follow me uh, on his personal, I think he said, it was like, I was blown by that. Um, but like, I had a good time at Titans Booth. Uh, as a photographer there, I guess I'm kind of based in my answer on more of a, which booth captured my attention the most. And JD Equipped. Like, I've talked to him numerous times. That dude had a nice spread. So much stainless everywhere. And him and his wife and um, whoever the other guy was, uh, some of the nicest people ever. So I enjoyed totally. being in their booth and just taking all these shots of everything they had. And um, who else? Dialed Motion. Those two guys. Those guys are NASA scientists. I'm confident. Those guys are like, <laughs> another, like I was blown away. And everything he showed me, I would, like, look at one of the other brothers. I was like, do you see that? Like, that is mind-blowing. <laughs> So like that's that's kind of how I was like I just I had a good time in a lot of booths. It's hard to pick a favorite, especially if you don't want to like hurt someone's feelings or whatever. Yeah. But I could name a bunch of booths that I really enjoyed. But uh, yeah, those are the ones that pretty much like stood out, and I walked away like, dude, I want to be more involved with these people uh, going forward. You know, like watch them, see what else they're going to come out. With. Good answers. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna try to go. I, I, looking back on the event, I didn't do, I didn't spend an abundance of time in any one booth. I feel like I was moving around a lot, grabbing a little bit of, you know, B-roll here and there, having a conversation, moving on. Um, 
And I, that's kind of a regret for me personally, is not actually like really just like getting saturated into a booth, looking at everything that they had. Um, but I find that like the booths that I had the, like the best time at were the booths where my friends were, you know, where like Chris and Randy at Beltfed and Steve and Sierra at Cleva or David Darko or Native Executive Fit or Dina Black Widow, right? Or mm -hmm. um, like where, like I felt like those were places where I could like go and not have to kind of work. Like I just kind of like put my mm -hmm. bag down and be like, what's up, dude? Like, and I just like, <laughs> yeah, they were my safe place. Like, I just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So those are the ones that stuck out to me the most. Um, because that's, 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 yeah, well, they were my safe place, but in, in terms of like equipment, I really enjoyed, I did spend a little bit of time in the rogue booth. I'm in the rogue, my rack is rogue. Right. So I was like really curious about their functional trainer and I spent a, not a good amount of time, but probably more time testing out their new rack mounted functional trainers than any other piece of equipment there. So I had a great time there, but I got to give like, I got to give some shout outs because I love swag as much as the next person. And I think that Bells of Steel and Fringe were super generous with their giveaways. Like they, anybody who came through there was getting cool swag and I just had to give them a, a shout out for coming ready to send people home with freebies. Cause I thought that was awesome. Like belts and mag pins and t-shirts and banners. Like that was cool. So, yeah. So I know that mine wasn't just like one answer, but it was hard. And of course, ATX was awesome. But like after doing all of those interviews, I'm like, man, they were kind of the bell of the ball. I feel like somebody else needs a mention on the best booth. Of <laughs> yeah. You know, you mentioned belt fed. I think they, if there was like a most creative, they oh, might yeah. get like most creative yeah. from me because I thought it was really well thought how they had like a, a, a workstation for Randy set up I where she was working Randy on that work. belt. Yeah. So like every time you passed, you could check and see like, oh, what did she add on to this belt? Like, oh, look. And like my son and I, every time we walked by there, we, we checked on like the progress of the belt. And then Chris also had a... um like a make your own lifting straps kind of right. opportunity that you could like make your own and that he would like walk you through it. So I thought those two features, in addition to just having the products displayed, were just a really creative kind of spin that I don't think any other booths had stuff like that. No. Yeah. Chris is super hard. nice, by the way. I was pumped to meet that guy. I've uh, oh, talked yeah. to him a couple of times online. As I walked up to him, it's like we've known each other forever. <laughs> hey, man, what's up? And I was like, dude, this is awesome. You know, he's just got, you want to hug him. And it's like, but I don't know you. You're a stranger, but I want to hug you, you know? Oh, yeah. And uh, Nate, Nate from Executive Fit. Uh, it's yeah. not my turn to talk, but I'm sorry. <laughs> that dude is, uh, he's probably one of the most, if not the most caring individuals in this entire space, right? I've talked to him a couple of times back channel. Nothing crazy, but the dude is genuine. He's authentic. He truly cares, right? And uh, the first time I saw him uh, here, he was walking up to me. He was like, he looked crazy. He had his crazy hair and his crazy beard. And he was walking really fast. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, hey, man, what's up? He shook, me, shook his hand real quick. And I was like, what's up, dude? And he's like, I got to go to the bathroom. And I was like, okay, well, you go do your thing. You know, like, just, just go on. And I thought, like, this guy has lost his mind. But then he made a point <laughs> later on to find me. And he was like, man, I'm so sorry. And he's like, we, we just chatted it up a little bit. And he's, he's oh, I loved it. It was so cool. So if he's watching, not insulting. I love it. Keep it going, yeah. dude. You're crazy. I love dude, it. I, I just want to say that I'm glad that you weren't the only one that noticed how, like, grizzly <laughs> man he was looking at oh, the dude. show this year. Because as soon as I saw him, I was like, oh, you – you because i don't know if you guys were following this but he was posting like his progress through 75 hard like leading up to the event i'm like you look like you just finished 75 hard dude like, you're taking yeah. it hard to another level yeah uh -huh. yeah no, no no i mean that in the the most loving way nate yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. No. his oh, family was so sweet too yeah, yeah man yeah absolutely <laughs> what about adam I want to hear what Adam's answer is for favorite. All right, we're going to do an favorite internet booth. check real quick. Everyone hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Well, I got to feel some answers because those mayhem plates definitely caught my eye. I hung out in mayhem for a little bit. The guys were super nice. Plates were, I mean, the chrome ones and then those raw finish ones. I mean, stellar. Those Love those coats. things. So nice. Yep. 
That is in clear coat, right? Yeah, I brought yeah. home. Okay. Uh, I brought home some of the clear coat. Very nice. Awesome. Yeah, those caught my eye for sure. And then we've already said it, but the machines from ATX. I mean, that German engineering. I mean, how could you not <laughs> like just be impressed by like, hey, pull this lever and yank this and yeah. something that you've never seen in the space before. It was awesome. So those are my two answers, but I had a great time at, I mean, every booth I went to, even Rogue, like, um, you don't, I don't get a lot of experience with like, there's stuff I, I, I don't buy a lot of Rogue, but you know, it's nice and just putting your hands on it and it's so smooth and just so well done. And it's, I mean, it is what it is for a reason. So yeah, it was sweet. Yeah. Jake, here's your opportunity to, uh, give an updated answer. On your favorite booth. Well, I mean, it's it's hard to put everything in the same the same category. So, like, you know, I think what you got, I think all you guys' answers were kind of what I was thinking. But um, I think like pound for pound, as as far as like company size, I think executive fit was tough to beat, which is what I chose. Belt fed is, was right up there. I think Rogue had the mo had the nicest booth and the most over the top booth. Um, I thought um, ATX, ATX and Rep were a little bit more engaging. For sure. Um, and I think, um, you know, I think they had um, ATX, the staff was incredibly engaging. And then I think Rep has done a good job of like, I think part of this is just because they knew what to expect. And they, you know, I think every like of the larger companies, that goes to this event where maybe the CEOs don't come. You need somebody like uh, Adam who like really mm. knows the community, knows the products can kind of like get on them, like get on video if you need to um, get involved with the lifts, like just, just knows what he's doing. Um, so I, th I would say like the rep booth was right up there and they won the award. You know, I think part of that just goes into like, showcasing how like engaging their booth was arm assassin had a cool booth oh thank you um yeah. yeah for sure he had all those three elements that i said luke at arm assassin definitely had too. Yeah. he had like a trial area he had a diverse product line and there was stuff that people didn't know what it was and he was like yeah you can arm wrestle why don't you do that yeah. <laughs> that was that was cool um bridge bill and i would say a lot of this a lot of this is like you know i got I, I was able to see the booths, but when it comes to specific products, I didn't get a ton of opportunities to really, um, you know, get my hands on too many things, but I would love to, but I've gotten a, um, just based off of the content, I've gotten a good look at, at a lot of stuff, most specifically like the ATX stuff. And that, that stuff was amazing. Yeah. Um, so like leading into like kind of another topic, um, what were some of the products that caught your eyes? <clears throat> so I'll go first on this one. And, uh, I think Matt, you already brought them up, but dialed motion and their pulley system was very impressive. Uh, I think that the ratcheting, like loading pin and, and glider that they had was, was really sweet. So um, that was one that I was really curious about. I think that the time that it's taken them to bring it to market has allowed some of the competition to catch up and, and beat them to market. But I think that their stuff is really, really, really great. I also want to get, I know we've talked about belt fed already, but at least for me, like I own a couple of belts and they're nice belts, but I think until you get your hands on like some of that premium leather that Chris and Randy are, are putting out, like you really don't know the difference between like a really, really high end belt and just like your stock, you know, lever belt that you're getting from whoever. Um, so for me, I think that their stuff needs a shout out. I really thought that uh, Jesse and his rack attached lateral raise was really premium. Like that thing was super, super nice. Um, and then I think the last one I've got on my list is the BAMP hammer, which I think is a cool idea. I don't train like that personally, <laughs> but it's a really sweet idea to rubberize a hammer so that you can, you know, instead of destroying a huge tractor tire, you can mess up your front porch steps instead. <laughs> 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 Excuse me. Yeah. 
Um, I'm sure there's more, but those are the ones that I felt like needed a shout out, at least what I could come up with uh, in the short amount of time that I was thinking about these. I think, um, I think for me, not, not going to repeat myself as far as the other ones, but um, uh, Titan, their leg extension, leg curl. It's about time that, you know, they bring a selector eyes to the market. I think it's going to do well for them once they make some tweaks to it. Uh, Club of Bill, I like his, his jack. I mean, not his jack, his um, deadlift. Uh, trap open bar. trap bar. What am I thinking? Open it's trap. Open yeah. trap. Yeah. Yeah. Very, yeah. very cool, unique, clever built isk design. Uh, very cool. Um, mutant metals. That simple little bracket to put those handles in. As soon as I thought, I was like, that is gold. I think I, I, I threatened you earlier, Jake, with physical violence. I'm pretty sure I threatened him with physical violence with like, if you don't take this to market, like I'm going to beat you up. You know what I mean? Because it was <laughs> so freaking good. And uh, going back to dialed motion, that, uh, that low row uh foot plate that they had the way i don't know if you messed with that mike but their whole system is ingenious and then putting that yeah. thing on there is like that completes it all so i'll be excited to see that thing come to market yeah i'm glad you brought up mutant metals because yeah that bracket just makes sense like if you done. if you like i have a uda and i'm like oh this is great like i mm -hmm. i want this bracket this is perfect yeah so yeah th i thought that was no really brand. cool uh, I agree with you, Mike, about belt fed. I love the stuff I have from them and I bought more yeah. stuff. I, <laughs> they nice. were one of the booths that I spent some money at and, uh, glad that I did, but I'd apply the same thing you said about like seeing good leather and good leather work in person to stronger grip. So stronger grip was hard to miss. I mean, they were dressed as like the, the circus they were. <laughs> master <laughs> ceremonies and had like yeah. a, a carnival, like esque thing where you could swing one of his hammers and try to make the bell ring so they had those elements of creativity and like action and motion to their booths and he and his wife uh, ryan and his wife were both just so engaging with anyone who walked by or walked up like here yeah pick it up try this thing here's this huge yeah. like metal dice roll it down the aisle try not to hit someone <laughs> like they were yeah. so fun <laughs> <laughs> but where I'm going with this is that you could buy like a, a hammer, you could buy various things to work out with that are far cheaper, but not with that craftsmanship. Like he is an artist and a functional artist. And the way he spoke about his equipment was impressive too, because he, you saw that it wasn't just like a pretty piece of equipment, that there was a, a function behind the way that he crafted it. So yeah, I was very impressed with him and uh, some of his equipment add some element of fun to your to your gym with stronger grip yeah yeah his their booth definitely was a, a standout just because their their pieces were so unique amongst everything that we were seeing in there um i didn't spend too much time but i got some decent b-roll and uh i've checked out their instagram since oh, then yeah. <laughs> and uh yeah it's a lot. they they are some some cool characters but um yeah good shout out Good shout out on that one. Oh. All right. Well, I'll jump in with my answer. Right. And my answer is kind of um, boring and for the masses. But I was just really looking forward to put my hands on the Adonis and Pegasus. And I was looking forward to put my hands on the Repens. And so those were pieces that I had like a lot of anticipation, like being able to touch and feel and how good is it really? And um, yeah, they lived up to my expectations. They were awesome. And so I know that was like one that like everyone could say, but um. My unique, yeah, answer, my unique would answer would be again the mayhem plates, but if I'm being honest, like the pieces were <laughs> from Rep. Yeah, those Rep Pepin dumbbells, oof, so freaking nice. I'm definitely gonna oh. be replacing my dumbbell with that. Oh, and the price you're gonna, point. You're gonna replace your whole set of fixed dumbbells. I'm, I'm gonna do it. We talked about this. You've got a. <laughs> You got nice dumbbells, right? Nice fix. Oh yeah, we did talk about and this I've, at I've dinner. Got, like, I mean, they're fully they're the fully knurled reps, so they're not like right. bad by means. Right. They're great, but it's like they're very bland. You know, it's like eh, you know what I mean. I don't I don't get excited about them. I don't do a ton of dumbbell work, so those rep peppins, man. They I would light a candle and turn off some light. You know what I mean? Like, oof, very <laughs> nice, very nice. <laughs> Turn on some uh, 90s R&B music. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah they are really nice. Well, I've, I've got a few um, that no one's mentioned. So oh, nice. The, did you guys try the resistance and rotation bars? I did not. Those were solid. Those, those, um, those were way better than I expected. Um, I didn't really get a chance to really go too hard on the 
Criterion armbar. Um, but those yeah, those one. looked good as well. Um, but the those resistance and rotation ones were, you know, you you see it online and you're like, hmm, looks cool. But once you try it, um, you can you can definitely feel it. And then I I also want to give Body Solid a shout out. They um they had a really nice booth and um some like high quality stuff and then the 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 cable bench where you can do leg curls and leg How extensions um i didn't even try it oh, okay. but, but that was something that i didn't expect and looked like a really cool option yeah the, and i was i was pretty impressed with uh the body solid booth in general it was one of those things it was one of those things where you know you take a closer look and you're like they've got a few unique things that um that you know nobody else offers which i thought was cool like that that standalone rower i have one of those um really like that too so um i thought synergy custom fitness they had pretty pretty uh storage something like stuff that i would love to add to my home gym uh, obviously like the black widow specialty bars. Um, I think all like based, not one, um, kind of stood out to me, but the, they were all just so nice and they have that black powder coat. I think, um, that deserves a shout out. I thought the exponent edge, um, calf raise thing was a good idea. Also the you know the u cups was was cool um but this the exponent edge one um doubles as a j cup and then also a calf raise so right. might have to give them a leg up um but yeah there was there was a lot of like really cool unique products that i don't think anybody else like that you wouldn't have had the opportunity to know was even coming unless you were there yeah and i'm sure we're missing Plenty right, yeah. of people that deserve a mention. Oh yeah, we're definitely um, pissing some people off. That's for yeah, sure. Oh yeah, <laughs> so man. I hope not. I <laughs> hope not. It held. I mean, Criterion had a special place in my heart because Bruce has been out of the game for a couple decades. So it was, and everyone loves a comeback story. So I mean, it felt like a cinematic thing when I when I saw Bruce there and met him and met his wife and. Yeah, he and just seeing him throughout the weekend. Every time I walked by, I'd see him like showing a Criterion arm bar, a Criterion attachment to someone. And I think, wow, like it's been like twenty five years since he's done this, and look at him like. And he had a very, I don't want to mention any specific numbers, but he had a. I spoke with him afterwards. He had a very successful weekend, uh, Did he? which was Good. yeah, which was like heartwarming. I was like, man, like the comeback. So yeah, it was pretty cool. Where was he set up at, Rob? He was right in the kind of the middle aisle there, uh, across from uh, Body Solid, actually. Okay, that so he was it. near. Yeah, he was near Body Solid, and he had a uh, like a a cable pulley, uh, small cable pulley kind of set up so that people could try his attachment, and then he had uh, his arm bar out for people to try, and then he had a bunch that he was you know selling. Gotcha. Cables yeah. are supposed to be in bed, and they're not. No, it happens. Yeah, and then. It was nice. another, I, I'll try to keep the promotion down here, but seeing my own product, Vintage Gains, at Jim Con was a bucket list, like, pretty cool thing. I, I don't know how many products I'll come out with in my life, but uh, it was pretty cool to uh, walk up and be like, hey, there's the thing. Like, we're doing this. Like, it kind of uh, made it real, you know? That is cool, Rob. That's cool. You partnered with that Mike. I cool. like Mike. He's a cool guy. Yeah, yeah. He's another one of those guys I just I hit it off with him at the Arnold last year, and uh, seeing him again, it's like no time had passed. We talk online. He's he's just a he's a cool guy. I like him. Walt too. Yeah. Oh, you got to support Walt. Forget about Walt. <laughs> no, Mike and his whole family and crew are very fun, and uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I'll I'll try to head up there again this summer. Um, cool. Yeah, we're definitely leaving certain products off. So sorry if you're listening and we didn't mention. There's just, there's just too many, um, you know, you guys have mentioned like you've, you've chatted with like friends, but were there any other vendors that really stood out to you, um, that you maybe met for the first time? I could, um, um I actually have one that was kind of a, oh, never mind, Adam, you go ahead. I'm going. 
Go for it. All right, I'm going to piggyback off of uh, what Rob was saying. And I spent some time at the Criterion booth uh, with my dad, actually. Um, and talking with that guy, uh, Rob, you're going to have to remind me of his name again. But it was awesome. And Bruce. him, Bruce, him demoing his product and like being able to like, you know, use the thing that he created so long ago. And I remember there was one in the very first gym I went to, like this beat down warehouse. And I said, there is a rusty one of these. And we use it all the time. And to be able to like touch a brand new one that he had just came back out with was so cool. Um, so I, I really enjoyed that conversation I had. Anybody else want to go? Uh, I can go. Uh, you were talking about Mike having like a home base, kind of like your friends and stuff. What yeah, became yeah. my home base was Arm Assassin Strength Shop because um, I'd interacted a little bit with Luke Raymond over the past year or so uh, because he's just like a, a monster of grip strength and uh, he was the number one overall in the competition. And since geographically, like the grip strength competition, I spent a lot of my time uh, getting it ready and, and running it and everything was right next to Arm Assassin. Mm -hmm. Then even once it was over, my son and I ended up like, our book bag was at Arm Assassin or we left this here. Or, like we checked in here. At one point, Luke's wife was like, you know, making sure my, my son got back to me and found me, the, you know, safe and sound. Like they were like our home base all weekend. So big thank you to uh, Luke and his wife and Arm Assassin Strength Shop. They were just very welcoming and cool people to meet and hang out with. Nice. I only got to meet Luke briefly. I didn't spend much time at his booth, unfortunately. Um, it wasn't until towards the end of the show that I realized that he made some of those uh, cable attachments with the chains on them that I've yeah. seen all over social. I think if I had made that, um, if I had recognized that earlier on in the show, I would have tried to make sure that I gotten a chance to use those. Um, but for me, I mean, I enjoyed speaking to all of our old friends from, from last year. Um, but I think I think a couple of standouts were a couple of the smaller guys, which was Elliot with Euclips. Uh, so Elliot and I go way back to when he was just getting the Euclips started. He had reached out to me um, and we just kind of established a friendship. So getting to meet him in person and talk to this young college kid who's just so smart and so articulate what? and so eager to be successful. Like it was just cool to connect with him and he. He did a good job of coming out to the casino with us uh, and, uh. and getting that FaceTime with as many people as he could. So I thought that was cool. Um, and then Kyle over at Heroic Fit, who I think was like a last minute addition to, to the show, right? Um, I just respect the hustle from that guy. Like I was just like wandering by on a, on a mad dash to somebody else's booth. And he just grabbed me and was just like, hey, man, you know, you want to try this bar? I listened to the podcast. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, I just like looked at him and was like, dude, I've got time. I've got time for you, man. Like, you, you know, he's out there with just like a chair and his bar lying on the floor, you know? <laughs> and he's just like, I was a last minute addition, but he's just so passionate about his product. And I just, again, I respect the hustle and the desire to be successful. So I thought chatting with him was a lot mm -hmm. of fun. Um, and then I'll give some like, some ad as like, Keenan and Adam at Rep were a ton of fun to catch up with. Uh, the ATX crew, which has gotten many of mentions. Uh, but I also want to give a shout out to Zach over at Rogue Fitness because I know that there's been some chatter that the Rogue booth wasn't as engaging or friendly maybe as some of the other booths. But I had a great time chatting with Zach, who I think is the sales manager over at Rogue Fitness. He always made time for me and would tell me everything I wanted to know about the equipment as long as I didn't have it on camera. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, I think that wraps up my, my answer. So uh, asking what the rogue thing, I had heard the same thing that they weren't engaged. In. I didn't, like I said, I didn't that. go in there and physically experience it. Right. right. What was, was that a deal? Like you couldn't be in there with a camera or something. Someone had even said there was like no photography or you couldn't, couldn't film, you couldn't have them on camera interviewing them or something. What was that, the deal? It, it was that. It was the latter. So I I I was I went like right to their booth on Thursday while everybody was still uh -huh. getting set up. Um and Zach like introduced himself and we started talking and I was just, you know, sharing my own personal excitement about the the new functional trainer and asking them a bunch of questions. 
and he was answering all of them. Um, and I, I was like, Hey, you know, like, uh, you know, he asked what I did and I was like, Oh, you know, I co-host a podcast and I do content. I would love to, um, maybe come back tomorrow or later today and, and, you know, do a little interview, ask you some questions. I have a, a list of questions that friends of mine want to know about these products. And he mm -hmm. said that they weren't, they weren't doing any interviews on the products because they're still prototypes and gotcha. They didn't want to speak to what they had on the floor at the risk of it changing before it launches. Yeah, yeah. That was at least the answer that he gave me. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, so that's what he said. Like he didn't, they didn't, I captured a good amount of content in the booth. So they didn't mind if you were getting content. They, they just wouldn't, more, they wouldn't do interviews. I, th I think that's the simplest way to put it is they wouldn't do gotcha. interviews. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Thanks. Uh, well, that's good to know. Um, I think for me, meeting people that I've talked to, you know, throughout the years online, Kim at Barbell Rescue, I've never met Damn. him ever, and that was really cool. Did oh. we, like, we hugged, we hugged, and he was like, he was filling me up, and he's like, yeah, it was, it was, it was weird. It was all a get out, but I loved it. It was like this is, <laughs> I like this. This is something I would do to like a, a friend of mine. You know, it was like I just, I, we had a connection. And um, Chris, uh, Chris uh, Clevabilt, Steve, I've never met yep. him in person. Love Steve. And, uh, seeing him, that yeah. dude is freaking jacked. And uh, yeah. Patrick, yeah, right? The bald head and the jack, he's just uh, he's freaking so jacked all over there, man. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Patrick <laughs> from Bridgeville, that dude is cool as piss. Uh, had a good conversation, two conversations with him. But oh. I had some good talks with him. And then who I else was Patrick. it? Oh, uh, uh, what was it? I thought this was really neat. The bear posts, I think, is yeah. the bear post. Yeah. So I've never heard of this brand. Don't know anything about them at all. But I guess if you were a premium ticket holder, you had a coupon in your bag that you were toting around. And so that's how I was introduced to him. Is he saw me and my wife with a bag, and he walked up from his booth. Hey, there's a coupon uh, in there. And he's like, you want to come over here and claim your free prize? And so he pulled <laughs> us into the booth. And I was like, I was like, yeah, you know, this is very clever but i was like i don't know anything about it what if i hate this product i don't want to be insulting whatever but it was actually a really cool product and he was super freaking nice like i, I genuinely yeah. enjoyed talking to him and uh yeah. the, the product really resonated with my wife because she's always like had new rubber and she's got aches and pains and stuff so she fell in love and that was good for me because i was able to like <laughs> capture content while she was like chatting it up but uh yeah there you go. What was the free gift at the bear post that I, I didn't discover ask. until like, <laughs> I think I got home. <laughs> yeah, no, you saw, you've seen his little, they're like resin um, things that attach your rack. It's like a mini one, um, almost looks like a doorstop, but I guess it's like, you just hold it in your hand and just um, rub it on your body and whatnot. Oh, isn't that for claw? your feet? Was, oh, uh, it's not the one for your feet. It on your foot, yeah. It's not the okay. one that has the platform. There's one that's a small okay. one with a little platform oh. and then it's just the small okay. one. Yeah. I, I'm assuming Dang. the platform is probably more for laying on the ground just to keep it stable. Yeah. But uh, yeah, me and my wife, we both got one. And uh, Nice. Should have gotten my free. Should have gotten my mini bear post. And I, I think I would just mention like the variety of people. So I think the variety of people within the niche. So like you had, I thought Titan did a really good job. Like their personalities were great. They were. Uh, the bar barbell voodoo guys were crazy um you know, the prx you could tell they were from like the south dakota north dakota or is it south dakota or north dakota one of the dakotas know. um you know like the atx guys were were incredible um peter keller he yep. had a great vibe totally um prime fitness people were so friendly uh swing sesh you know i think just like the ver the variety of people is what is what did it for me um and everyone you know we talk about competition but like everybody seemed to get along with each other yeah i saw uh, something i really liked was seeing some of the collaborations so like um black widow and waited out spoke ahead of time mm -hmm. and like waited out put their plates on black widow's equipment so i thought it was kind of cool to like see companies uh collaborating for the purpose of display at their booths. Even you know, that, you know, met other people's booths, like just chatting it up. That was pretty cool to see. Yeah. Yeah. Online, sure. You kind of build up this fictional world of everyone's in their own corners, you know, plotting and stealing ideas <laughs> yeah, exactly. or potentially protecting or, 
you know, the bat let out and it's, you know, every man for himself. So it was really cool seeing everyone in one room and they're all just admiring each other's uh, products, you know, just kind yeah. of uh, as people. That's really cool. Yeah. Speaking of collaborations, I mean, it just goes to like highlight why Dean won that award. Uh, Dean makes the the attachment brackets for the bear post. Yeah. So done. there's a, there's yeah. a collaboration right there. And then Dean and Jesse over at Gym Equipped have been collaborating yep. on some stuff. Like Dean built the 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 post and everything for the lateral raise I mentioned that Jesse had there and they met last year. So yeah, yeah. that's a great, yep. and that, great point. That came straight out of Home Gym Con last year. Yeah. yeah, they had no yeah. idea they were both the on Long one. Island. <laughs> right. <laughs> What's, uh? you guys have brought up free giveaways quite a bit. What's apparently I did not grab enough swag while I was there. So what are some of your free giveaway favorites? Like I'll, I'll throw one out just to answer my own question. I just mentioned, wait it out, wait it out. I thought it was simple, but just a really cool little like souvenir. They had this uh, for the person purpose of marking your golf uh, ball, but it was like a miniature weight plate that had home gym con 2024 on it. That was pretty cool. That was cool. I didn't get one of those, even though I think we displayed those on social be before the show that they would be there as giveaways, but I did not, I did not secure one. Dude, my, my wife was, I was in work mode, building relationships mode. I was just, I wasn't, I wasn't as hands on with the equipment as I would like to have been because I was so focused on capturing the content and talking with these people. My wife, she, as much as she loves all this stuff, you know, she gets bored and she plays her own games of I'm going to collect as much free stuff as I can. <laughs> so she's going around and she's collecting swag and shirts and all that. And it's, it's great. Cause it works out. Cause you know, we get together and it's like, what all did you get? You know, a bunch of goodies, but I did discover, I think a, uh, a hack that I'm definitely going to try again. It was purely unintentional, but um, I'm an idiot. Apparently I didn't pack any shirts at all to travel. With. None, none at all. Literally. <laughs> Just going bare chested. I literally had a tank top on, and that's yeah. what I rolled in in. Well, I delivered I, I delivered Barbara Rescue shirts for him, right? He had them shipped to me because there's something about the timing. It wouldn't work out. So he's like, yeah, you can snag one of those shirts. So I put on one of those, and I wear it to day one, right? Uh, well, at day one, Rep gives me a shirt because they're giving them out right. to everyone. So day right. two, I wear that. I go to Fringe's booth. They're like, you take that shirt off. And they give me a Fringe shirt. So I put that on. <laughs> I go to Force USA. They're like, you take that off. And they give me a Force USA. Everyone wanted you to represent them. And it was like, dude, this is yeah. it. This is the way to do it. <laughs> oh, genius. And it was purely unintentional. <laughs> That's sweet. I love it. So anyway, I got a bunch of shirts. <laughs> yeah. Man, you're, you're bringing up stuff that I totally missed. I didn't get a Force <laughs> USA shirt or a Barbell Rescue shirt. Um Man, it's hard to answer that question. I'm going to try to go. It's going to be a few. So last year when Peter Keller and Fringe weren't there, but Peter was there, he was giving out the mag pins to select few people. Uh, and I, I got one from him last year. But with mag pins, you kind of need them in a pair. So to be able to finally cut complete my <laughs> pair this year <laughs> of the Fringe Sport mag pins, nice. same color. <laughs> Uh, that was, that was pretty sweet. So that's probably the most functional one. Like the one that will get the most use, uh, in my, in my space. But then, cool. uh, let's see the, I, so swing sash was giving out these magnetic koozies, uh. which were really cool. And they, they just saw Kyle and I walking around with a, with a energy drink from first form. They're like, you guys need to put a koozie on those. So they gave me one. Um, <laughs> But then I think the one I think the the most meaningful one. So we've talked about ATX a lot, and uh, and Kyle had the privilege of of taking home so much ATX equipment, yeah, and and the, the ATX guys like I was always with Kyle, right? We were we were together a lot of the time, so Kyle was always talking to them and you know sharing his excitement about you know uh, being able to negotiate a deal with them to take the equipment home, and they could see like the sadness on my face that like. <laughs> I was not in a position to take anything home. I, I mean, like nothing. I just like, I couldn't, everything was way bigger than my suitcase. So like on Sunday, when I'm like helping Kyle load up all of this equipment, they, uh, they, one of them walked over and he handed me one of their magnetic 
protein shaker bottles nice. and he was like this is especially for you so that you can at least take one thing from atx home <laughs> so, that's cool so that was the most meaningful one uh, for me yeah 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 i guess mine uh, hasn't gone. those um the magnetic cell phone holders for the rack i don't know um mm. who are those from jake do you remember who had that Lip man more. i missed some good stuff there's more yeah i didn't yeah, get they that were, um we they gave us uh like 10 or so to throw in gift bags and they gave us extra two one for one for uh, jake and i up front okay. and so we like threw them in like a bunch of random of the um the swag bags that we were handing out but i thought oh that's pretty cool and i popped it on my rack when i got home i love it i mean it's just somewhere to like slide your phone so it's like right there but yeah that's my favorite did you get cool. to walk around a ton adam i got down there quite you, a bit you yeah. were working every time i saw you did you yeah. Yeah, I tried to I tried to stick around the the front desk as often as I could, but like when it got slow, I definitely got down there. Did some right. walking okay. around, did some talking and stuff. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, well, what about you, Jake? I'm sure, you got to take home some cool stuff. Uh, just the ATX bar, which is amazing. This nice. is home gym con. Yeah. Uh so yeah, that's that's what I got. Um, and then you know some free T shirts, which are awesome and. So, but yeah, I wasn't like, um, you know, scanning around, talking <laughs> to people within their booths most, most of the day. If I was, it was like answering questions. So, yeah. um, wasn't really looking for free stuff, but that's all right. Um, well, I think that was a pretty good kind of recap. Um, you know. I think we'll, we'll. I think we should do something relatively soon with this group, and just say, "Hey, here's where we're at for 2025. Let's let's talk about how to make this as good as possible." Um, so next year, next June. So we're still 13 months away. Last weekend of June in Louisville. Um, you know, Adam mentioned earlier, like off to a great start. Uh, we have, you know, I want to say we have like 115 tickets sold nice. already, which was like, you know, more than we had for this year, six months in off the top of my head, most likely. Uh, I think like 110 out of those 115 are double day ticket purchases. So it's not just like the single day mm -hmm. people are buying the doubles. Nice. Um, we, as started, re this is Tuesday. We started reaching out to new vendor or to vendors on Friday and we have 43 vendors. Uh, so about half of the vendors or over half of the vendors that were actually in attendance last year have already signed back up. And I think that that 43% or 43 is equal to 85% of the square footage. So we're already like close to as many square feet wow. as next year. So there's, yeah, all of like the big guys, most of the big guys, so Rogue, ATX, and um, Rep signed up right away. We had uh, most of the people that were also signed up from year one signed back up. You know, you could go down that list. Most of them have already signed up. Um, we have, we have two, like for example, of just like what else to expect as this event expands. We have two pre-launch companies that have already signed up. Um, mm. One signed up with a 1,200 square foot booth, which is I like as wow. bigger than my first house. I was gonna say, wow, <laughs> <laughs> which is the ATX booth from last yeah. year. Wow. Okay, and then another one with 800 square feet. So an, also another big booth. So two like companies no one's ever heard of are are buying up big spaces. Um, how does wait? So how did this work? Like, did they sign up and then like send you an email and say like? We're a secret company. Yeah, don't tell anyone. Don't reveal who we are. Uh, like, so how did like how did that sign up work? And how did you even, they reached out to you then, obviously, if they're an unknown company? Instagram DMs, they just DM say, how do we sign up? Hmm. And everything is through email. 
Okay. That's cool. So, so yeah, this like the home gym con social media, the Instagram account is very active. Are you to, like a lot of people are very active. Are you allowed to reveal have, anything the company... about them? Sorry, Matt. Are, no, 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 no. Are you allowed to reveal yeah. anything about them? No. And honestly, I don't. Are you sure that they're in the fitness industry? Info. Yes, because it'd be yeah. hilarious if there was a twelve hundred foot like vacuum yeah. cleaner company or something. <laughs> no, I'm very no, leaf blower company. Yeah, exactly. That would be appropriate. There you go. So, no, so one, one of them is one of them is a company that maybe you've heard of. Okay, and it's, it's a spinoff brand. Spinoff brand. You, you're never going to guess. It's so Nike. Don't even try. Yeah. No, no. So there's there's one of those, and then there's another one that. Um, they <laughs> say, Jake, I know there's you some to. information that I could share, but, um, there's the 800 square foot is like, we have a patent and we're hoping to release later this year. Gotcha. So, Ooh. um, so like you, mm. by the time, by the time the event happens, both should be live, I think. Gotcha. Okay. Which is, will you make it known? Like. I don't know. I guess when the patent is, when, are you going to like, is it yeah. going to be like a secret when you get there and then it's like, oh, this is who it is. Are you going to let it no, know? No, I don't out? think so. No, no, no. Just whenever they're ready to yeah, say who they are. What if they're, uh, yeah. I just I don't know why this, my mind goes there. I picture a big old 1200 square foot booth and just a single table sitting there. And it's just one guy just to be a dick. <laughs> what, he bought out all this space for, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, this is yeah. He's got nothing to chill you all, you like know? Like, the, uh... What if it's like a... Uh... <laughs> Like Coop with like a picnic table oh, and just a sign <laughs> on it. Be amazing. And it's just like <laughs> you know, something, something, something changed my mind. Yeah, <laughs> like the meme. Like, uh, yeah. I mean, amazing. If Coop wants to pay for that, then uh, oh, that's man. go for it. That's Crazy. amazing. Oh, um, <laughs> I want to ask. Like, so I'm I'm curious, uh, Jake. Like, what are your I don't know your sentiments? Like, how are you feeling coming off of year two? Like I, I, you, like I know we've gone long, but I'm just like super personally curious. Like, how are you feeling about how things went? The coverage that the event is getting, uh, fought, you know, in the weeks following compared to last year. Like, just where are you at? Yeah, I'm in a good spot. I think like I try and think about it. Like, um, what did I expect going into this year? And you, we had like so much early success. I feel like I, you kind of like forget that you're way ahead of schedule already. So I think that's where, that's where my mind is at. It's like, it's still like, there's still a lot of work to be done, but you can't complain uh, as about where it's at at all. And I think just like the, the word spreading. And I think that, you know, it's a thing like home gym con is actually a thing and yeah. that like people, like all companies are considering it. Like it's a, it's a, it's a threat to a lot of other, maybe not a threat, but it's a, it has its place in the events world already. Yeah. Oh, but, totally, um, yeah. So I think, you know, I like, it's still like a startup. It's still like a startup and it's still like, um, you know, like I said, a lot of work to go until it's like a legitimate business or until you feel really comfortable with, with stuff like that. But yeah, I mean like the sky's the limit. I feel really good about it. And it's, it's, it's just been really, it's, I think the, the, the thing that like gets me most excited is like, yeah, sure. We, there are definitely things we could have done better. There's a, a list of things that, you know, like the, the live podcasts and like the, we had a ton of things like that little things that most people didn't notice that, um, didn't go perfectly, but in general, the last two years, everyone has left pretty happy and like excited to come back and like guaranteeing uh, like they're coming back. Like the fact that we got, um, 43 people to 43 companies to sign up for, um, a sp space that's nearly 14 months out is just like incredible. So, I mean, I feel good. I feel good. I, it's still like a lot of it is intense and a lot of pressure, but yeah, I mean, 
Yeah, can't complain too much. Cool, man. I'm glad to hear it. Well done. You did an awesome job, Jake. Yeah, yeah, Very, incredible, uh, man. Very impressive. I, I wasn't there year one, nor do I think I would have even really fit in year one, just because ah. I'm more. Of a, uh, I don't have like all the relationships like that. A lot of people. I'm fine with it. You know, it is what it is. But like the equipment side, that's what like gets me like. <clears throat> And year two, just walking in. I've been to the Arnold. I know you don't want this to be anything like the Arnold, but me and you've talked. You want it, in my mind, you want that professionalism that Arnold, that the Arnold event has. And you 100% nailed it, in my mind, as a consumer not seeing anything going on in the back end. Very well done. Very <laughs> impressive. And uh, year three is going to be better. I know it's going to be better. And uh, year two is amazing. So, yeah. I, yeah. I think that's that's the biggest feedback that, I've gotten that I've been very surprised is that people thought it was like very organized. Oh yeah. 100%. Whereas like, you know, honestly, Adam and I like and Rob and Kurt and yeah, Mike, like we winged it all year. Like we just <laughs> all year, just kind of like added this, added this, added this, this didn't work, changed. Like things were changing all year. So the fact yep. that like people ended up thinking that it was a well-organized event is pretty cool. I think that a lot of that just goes to, um the performance of the vendors yeah you know the vendors get the credit for that they were the ones who you know brought these incredible booths and their personalities yeah. and all did such a good job so i think that they're the ones that kind of deserve the organization and performance aspect yeah yeah i mean sweet i think i speak for a lot of people when i just say i'm, I'm already looking forward to it i I, I can't, I can't wait. I mean, I'm getting messages from people saying the same thing. People dropping comments on my content, saying the same thing. Like, can't wait for Louisville. Here we come last weekend in June. What? Hey, and Jake, it's kind of, and, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say like, even the like general sentiment, like in terms of like discord channel or Reddit and just like Instagram comments, like it would, like the original feedback was like, why would it be in French Lick? No one really cares. And I think yeah. that's kind of changed. Like, even if I think, even if we brought it back to French Lick again, I think the words out, like it's a legit event, no matter what. So I think like just the, the general tone, there's really only a few haters out there yeah. right now. Um, I, I should so. say that, that I, when I was driving home, I was thinking about it, kind of reflecting on it. And even though we're heading to Louisville, I, I, I'll have a spot in my heart for French Lick, Indiana. You know? miss French Lick. Yeah, I'll, I'll miss French Lick a little bit. And I know it had its problems in terms of people traveling, not having an airport nearby. But I think every ticket holder and new companies this year saw what we had been saying all year since the first time that like, this is a great venue, like you're gonna enjoy it. So yeah, a lot of positive comments about French Lick Resort. <laughs> I'll miss it. It's always in our hearts. Always here. The home of Larry Bird. Now I was going to ask you this, Jake, and you'd have to put, some, put this in the podcast or whatever, but with it being in Louisville, I would imagine like where it's going to be located, it's going to be more happening just in general with like just local traffic. Are you going to be promoting like locally, like try to get into those channels ahead of time and, you know, hey, this this is going to be in your city. You know, if you're into fitness, you know, stop in this weekend or whatever. Are you? Have you I know you've thought about it, but do you have plans to – to actually pursue that uh i know radio i don't even know if is radio even a thing anymore like advertising on a radio locally or is it more of a facebook group or something now or so i don't i don't think we want to do too much local like art advertising like i don't think okay. the goal is to like get as many people as you possibly can uh for uh -huh. like a number of reasons you want like you don't want it to be overcrowded. You want right. it to be the the right people there. And um, you all, it just like, you know, we experienced growing pains just going from like what year one to year two. I also want to make sure that year three kind of stays into like that area we can handle. So I gotcha. don't think you, you want to like market it to like, 18 year olds in louisville who are you know i don't think you Looking want to market something to like to do that with colleges yeah. yeah you still want the quality of people to right. be high so yeah i guess i'm not going to join the uh, louisville home gym facebook groups then 
<laughs> that was my plan. I was thinking. So I think Louis, so I think Louisville home gym Facebook group. There you go. Yes. That was my plan. I was going to put out just... some Facebook. Uh, yeah, for well, sure. Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, so I, I think of like in terms of Nashville is like the biggest city that we've got near us, and it's still like an hour and a half away. But they have their own little fitness expo that comes around once a year, and it's it's an amateur thing. But you know, it's it's kind of you know whatever. But you know, I hear about it. I know when it's coming and it's like, well, you know, if I'm not doing anything that weekend, if I'm into fitness and I feel like making a drive, you know, it's just something to do. So I didn't know if you're going to kind of put some fillers out locally, just, hey, we're here, but you, uh, you don't yeah, want to. Think, I think you want some sort of presence, like, hey, right, local, right. home gyms, come. But I don't think right. you want to like, <laughs> yeah, we don't want you've you've been to the Arnold, you've seen the right. Arnold crowd. We oh, we don't yeah. want so that. Stupid. We want something in the middle of like right. what happened last year, and then because you still want you still I think we can still like three, four, five times more people, and it'd be right. still decent. Yeah, manageable. We, for sure. yeah. Just one billboard, it's like. <laughs> a billboard would be like, kind of cool. Could Massonomics design, design a billboard? billboard. <laughs> Both sponsor and design they a billboard because they had a billboard for Massonomics I think podcast. One billboard that was might great. be <laughs> a billboard might be a, yeah something we should do. That'd be awesome. <laughs> but yes. make sure there's like yeah. a photo opportunity with the billboard, like wherever it's located, so that you know people could take a picture with the billboard behind them, or at least one dorky guy from pittsburgh that would be cool <laughs> yeah all right well do it again sometime soon i'm game let's do it all right well that's it nice you gotta have a better sign <laughs> you want here code do you want the thing <laughs> just do or something i don't care all right i'll do the thing here <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for us. If you liked tonight's episode, be sure to keep your eye out for new episode releases wherever you listen to podcasts. Stay involved on our social media sites by following Garage Gym Experiment and taking part in our Sunday surveys on Instagram so that you can be a part of these conversations. Like, follow, subscribe to the channel on YouTube, and get involved on our website for all your home gym content needs. Guys, we're talking about Home Gym Con. Be sure to follow Home Gym Con on all the socials. HomeGymCon.com may be down right now, but you can still go on and get your tickets. New site coming up soon. And uh, we hope to see you there in Louisville, 2025. Jake, do you have anything else left for the listeners? Nope. All right. Hey, guys, thanks for joining us. We'll catch you again next time. Bye-bye. Later, fellas.